So this is part four of the best things you didn't know Reaper could do. So the next thing I want to show you is soloing items under mouse. If we open up our actions by hitting the question mark, it opens up our actions list, type into the filter solo item, and we can see a few actions that we could use for soloing our items, as opposed to soloing our tracks. We could solo them, toggle solo them, and so on. But the more useful use of this is to use the SWS extensions. And if they're installed, these actions will show up. So let's take a look how these work. This one is going to toggle play from the edit cursor and solo the item and track under the mouse until we hit it again or toggle it. So let's add a keyboard shortcut to this one. Now if I put my mouse on the track or items I want to solo, hit that keyboard shortcut, it solos it. You got someone new, I know. It. Plays it, hit the keyboard shortcut again, and it stops playback. And it unsolos that item. Do the same thing with this kick. It plays it. Hit it again. It stops it. With the snare, overheads, or bass. Hit it again to stop it. And it'll work with folders as well. So these drums are all in a drum folder. Put my mouse over here, over this track. Hit that keyboard shortcut. It plays just that track, the track or item under our mouse. And we hit that keyboard shortcut again. It stops playback and takes us out of solo. But we could also use this action instead, which will do the same thing, but instead of playing back based on a Reddit cursor, it'll play back on the timeline based on where we place our mouse. Let's use this one instead. Replaces it. And now, if we place our mouse right before this vocal, hit it. You got someone new, I know. It, it starts playback right at that spot. If I put it right here. But I will keep on denying it. Hit it again to stop. If I go to the kick over here. Or the snare over here. Or the bass over here. It starts playback right at that spot. And there's two other options we could use as well. This one will play back from the edit cursor position, but you have to hold down the keyboard shortcut. As soon as we let go, it'll stop playback and unsolo that item or track. So we have to hold it down to play back that same section, which is going to start from the edit cursor position. Let's edit here. Replaces it. Now it's going to start playback when we hold down the keyboard shortcut, playing from the edit cursor, and soloing the item or track under the mouse. So if we want the vocal, hold down that keyboard shortcut. It solos it. You got someone new, I know. And if I let go, it stops playback. Do the same with the kick. Or the bass or all the drums. Soloing the item or track that is under our mouse. And the last one will do the same thing, but it'll start playback where we place the mouse. So we put the mouse over here, hold down that keyboard shortcut. But I will keep on denying it. Let go to stop. So at the snare over here, or here, so at the bass over here, and let go to stop playback. Do the same with the guitar, or the piano. It's just a quick way of soloing our items or tracks. But with these two options, you do have to hold down the keyboard shortcut. If you don't want to, just use one of these two instead. So the next thing I want to show you is solo defeat and record disable. So for project setup here, 
I want to say I want to solo my drums at all times. So I can solo the vocal while still hearing the drums or the bass, guitars, and keys, but at all times, always hearing the drums. Of course, we could solo the drums and just solo what else we want to hear. Maybe the bass or the vocal. You got someone new, I know. But a better and more effective way of doing this is to solo the feet or drums. So you can select all the drum tracks, right click the solo button, and choose solo defeat, which defeats the solo for those tracks. Notice how the solo button looks locked. So if we solo any other tracks, these tracks will still be heard. Where typically when we hit solo, it just plays those tracks. So if I solo the bass, we're gonna hear the drums and the bass. Or the vocal. Yeah, but I will keep on denying. Or the guitar and piano. My emotions. So at all times, regardless of what track we solo, we're also going to hear the drums without having to solo the drums. And to undo it, just select them again and right click and turn this feature off. This is also useful if we create tracks for a talkback mic whether it be in the control room or the live room. Let's make a new track. Let's name it Talkback. We'll put this track into record, set our input where our vocal mic is plugged in. And let's say we want to hear this mic at all times. So the control room can hear the live room or vice versa. Typically, if we sold our tracks, we're not going to hear the Talkback mic. So we'd need to solo this one as well. And that's where this feature comes in. Just right click, solo defeat. Now if I solo my drums, we're gonna hear the talkback mic along with our drums. Or the vocal, or any other track we solo. And this is also useful for MIDI. Let's say we set this up for the input to be MIDI. Let's put an instrument on this track with a piano sound. Let's say we want to hear that track at all times as a reference for other things that are playing. Maybe checking the key, trying out some melodies. You got someone new, I know. Yeah. But I will keep. And if we solo any other tracks, let's solo the vocal and the drums. Typically, the piano won't be heard. If this feature wasn't turned on, we would play this. You got someone new, I know. And we wouldn't hear the piano. So if we want to hear this MIDI instrument all the time, we could use that feature. Solo defeat. And now, even with our tracks in solo, we're still gonna hear this track. You got someone new, I know. But I will keep on denying. So even if we solo any other tracks, we're always going to hear this track, whether it be MIDI or a talkback mic or any input we want, which brings up the other feature, record disabled. Let's unsolo our tracks. Let's say I wanted to record some vocals. If I put this track into record, this track is also in record. Whether it's set up for MIDI or audio. So if we go into a chord to record some vocal, it's also going to record on this track. Whether it be a talkback mic, instrument, maybe some hardware effects, or MIDI. If we don't want that and we just want to use it as an input, we need to have this track in record in order to hear it, but we could right click it and choose record disable input monitoring only. And if we choose this, the record button looks different. Now if we go into record, we can record our vocals and it won't record our talk back, our listen back mic, or any MIDI or input we set up on this track. So we can use this track for a reference or a talk back mic or listen back mic while recording our vocals. 
go into record. And it just records on this track. It doesn't record our talkback track, or if we set this up to MIDI for our piano, it's not gonna record any MIDI, but we record our vocals or anything else we mean to record. So it's a great way of separating specific tracks, not to be recorded and always set so we could hear their input. Now, because I have so many of these, I've divided it into multiple parts. Check out part five soon. So that's pretty much it. That's the best things you didn't know Reaper could do. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.